What's up, 7-3 fans? Welcome back to the 7-3 Garage. Favorite host, Brandon, back again with some information here. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in as always. Really excited about today's video. This has been suggested to me by a couple of uh, subscribers and I've finally gotten around to do it. Had uh, some previous commitments with work the past couple of weeks that I've had to focus on. Uh, but the day for that has come and gone, so I'm gonna try and put a little more effort into getting some videos out to you guys and some good content coming up in the next couple of weeks. But uh, again, just before we get started, make sure you guys check out jellybookperformance.com for all of your power stroke needs, performance tuning, parts, whatever you got. Brian is the man and can get you dialed in. So let's get started on what we have in today's video. The question I always get asked is, what is my transmission cooler setup? So I'm gonna show you guys that in just a second, but I wanna talk quickly about the importance of keeping your transmission fluid cool. What's the average transmission temperature for fluid? Well, that really depends. Uh, normal day-to-day -day street driving, I've heard anywhere from 160 to 180 being the max, uh, 150 to 165, 175 operating temperatures. So there's a, a very wide range of temperatures for operating um, a daily vehicle with towing and just normal heat stress, driving to and from, stopping and going, idling, things like that. So I like to keep my transmission temperature between 150 and 165 degrees. Some people disagree with that and that's fine but you also have to have the transmission temperature at up to operating temperature. If your transmission temperature is too cold, you're not gonna have that good firm shift. You may have things not operating right, kind of lazy. So the temperature of the fluid is supposed to get warm, but not too hot. What happens when it gets too hot is you start to have that uh, clutch breakdown. You start to have things sticking and melting. You start to have all the plastics and seals start to break down. So when you start pushing 200, 215, 220, 240, 250, even more hotter and hotter and hotter, what starts to happen is you start to break down all the components inside the transmission, including all the clutch packs for each gear, uh, as well as the actual fluid. So the fluid life starts to deteriorate. A lot of websites online say that every time you cool your transmission by 20 degrees, it extends the life exponentially. So the overall health of the transmission remains, which is what we all look for, especially if you're towing every day. There's a wide variety of people that I've spoken to who don't only use their trucks for fun, but they also tow on the side. Maybe they tow during the week and they hit the track on the weekend. So they wanna have the best of both in their transmissions. And with today's technology, the E-40Ds and 4100s have really come uh, quite a long way. So with that being said, I'm gonna show you guys uh, where the factory transmission cooler is and usually how it works. And I'm also gonna get another truck to show you what my setup is. Uh, excuse the fan, it's super hot here in South Florida and it's 90% uh, humidity at 88 degrees with the sun not out. So uh, I gotta keep, keep the fan going, but I'll make sure that I speak up. So the factory transmission cooler is located up here on the passenger side. Uh, normally you have more space here. My intercooler is uh, taking up the space where the existing cooler used to be. But I believe it's between 10 inches and it's only a two row uh, cooled unit. So that's all you got basically if you have a stock truck. If you have a stock truck and you're just, it's a daily driver, you don't see any towing really, it, it does the job. It, it, you know, the temperature gets a little warm, but it's not too bad. But when you start doing performance parts and you start towing really heavy, that transmission cooler is just not gonna cut it. And like we just spoke about before, you really start to hurt uh, the transmission fluid and you really start to take away the life of the overall uh, transmission itself. So it's super important to make sure you have good cooling on these things. I believe, and someone please correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe uh, the fluid has also run through the radiator and I've heard pluses and minuses to that. I had that uh, routed that way. I had a, a bigger B&M cooler uh, that, was from the, that I bought from, I think, Summit Racing or Jegs. And I had it in the grill, this is probably four or five years ago, and it did great. As soon as I put the intercooler uh, in the truck, I had to relocate the trans cooler. I had it right under the front. Did not do the same thing. For those of you that don't know, as the clutch fan is spinning, it's, it's, it's drawing air. So what it does is it pulls air from the outside through the grill to hit the radiator and it pushes it out the sides uh, throughout the wheel wells and out the hood creases and things like that. So that air is constantly being pulled onto the radiator. If the transmissions fluid is in there as well, it also gets heated. So I had issues with my transmission fluid temperature going very hot. I mean, in a normal day with no sun out or even at nighttime, 210, 215 degrees at nighttime with a set of stage one fuel injectors just running around having fun. So something was not right with that and I had to come up with a solution for this, so that's what I'm gonna show you guys under the truck. So one of the main things that helps really keep this transmission cool is this Mag High Tech Deep Pan. 
This you can purchase really from any big diesel distributor. I had this put on my transmission when uh, I actually changed it out, so I rebuilt it. Not only does this help with extra oil capacity, I believe this adds seven quarts over stock. So you have more fluid volume as well. Obviously, if you add more fluid volume uh, to, a already, uh, to a unit that already has a large amount of fluid in it, it's a lot harder to heat up, let's say 15 quarts as opposed to it is to nine quarts. I'm just making up numbers here just for, uh, for an example. So this is awesome. Not only does it help with cooling, but it also helps with strengthening the uh, actual case of the transmission. So it's also, it has a couple of different benefits. So as you guys can see, I have these braided lines from the factory. I believe they are an inverted flare uh, fitting because they are hard lines. These fittings I had made custom uh, by a local shop and I honestly cannot remember the size. It's not a uh, it's not an NPT fitting and I don't think it's a GIC fitting. Uh, I'm trying to think I, I really am having a hard time remembering what the uh, what the actual thread pitch is. It, was, it is a custom size fitting though. Uh, but I, as you can see here I do have this is a dash six braided uh, PTFE fitting. So this has the plastic liner with the braided outside. So that's that's it's, uh, the supply and this is the return i believe i haven't messed with this in quite some time so again please feel free to correct me so i have the lines on here and we're going to roll back back here for just a second and show you guys where this goes to so here's the lines that come across my rear seal is leaking so i have to fix that but the rear lines we have plumbed up, up over here and they end up over here at this awesome Dorelli cooler this is one of the best things that i've put on this truck uh, for the transmission to keep everything cool. This is a Dorelli, uh, it's a 40 roll, 40 row cooler with a fan. So this thing is kick ass and it really does the job for me. And dr cruising around, even if I'm playing with the truck or stop and go traffic highway, the sun could be blazing. My temp on the transmission is like 155, 160 at the most. It rarely goes over 160. So this fan really, really gets the job done. These are all, again, like I said, this is all braided TFE fittings. And we got these nice, actually got these off Amazon, these little hose holders, and uh, they do really good. And uh, these are just dash six. I think these are air equip uh, fittings, dash six uh, coming in and out. And these again are all um, TF, uh, braided TFE fittings, 90s, things like that. These are all things that are available on Summit Racing or JEGS. Uh, it's all universal stuff and you can put it all together yourself in your garage if you have uh, all the basic tools. So real quick about this fan. Uh, this is a 165 degree thermostat that I was initially using and I actually stopped using it. And the reason being is when the truck was uh, starting to warm up and uh, you know really hot out, the fan would come on at 165 degrees but the fluid temperature would continue to climb. And the, the fan was constantly playing catch up with the fluid. So the fluid even gets 180 degrees. And then if you kind of slowed your driving down or uh, you, you were kind of on back roads and stuff. It would cool the temp down and the fan would shut off. But I was tired of the truck playing or the fan playing catch up with the transmission. So what I did was ended up just changing this to 12 volt ignition. So as soon as you throw the key forward, it powers the fan on. And this fan is weatherproof, waterproof. So it does really awesome. And probably again, like I said, one of the best things that I've probably put on this truck for this transmission. I have not had a single problem uh, cooling the uh, fluid down on the transmission. I will include the link uh, for this particular fan. So if anyone's thinking about doing this, uh, it's awesome. I just use some Unistrup brackets here, some nice self tappers with washers and some hardware as well on the other side here. And it works great. It stays under the truck. Like I said, you could put it in the bed. I, I've tried to try to avoid that. So that, uh, you know, the, the cooler itself wasn't exposed to the sun. So it wasn't pulling in any excess heat, but under here it stays in the shade. It's nice and cool. You can have this fan set up to push or pull. So depending on how you mount it right now, it's pulling. So it gets all the air from the top and blows all the heat out. And it's pretty cool to see this thing idling after you've been driving and you put your hand under here and the thing's like a friggin' leaf blower. I'll have to turn it on for you so you guys could see it. But this thing is sick. The other question that I get asked a lot is what type of transmission do I have in my truck? Well, this is a E4OD. So it's an, obviously the truck's in 1997. Uh, so this has an E4OD series transmission in it, and it has a legendary E4OD from Diesel Sight. They are up in Homosassa Springs, Florida, and the owner is Bob Riley. Bob Riley uh, was the brains behind getting one of these transmissions dialed in. I remember when they were kind of rumored to be having a transmission coming out because when it came time for me to get a built transmission, I looked at a couple of different companies, 
and I reached out to Diesel Site and they told me that they could take care of me. So uh, I actually drove up and had my transmission uh, put in by them. It was already built and they basically brought the truck up, took them about a day. They switched the transmissions out and I left the next morning with it. So that was uh, incredible. And I actually had the transmission rebuilt last year uh, when I was on a road trip. I went to the racetrack to test the truck a little bit and ended up cracking a forward drum. So I went up there to diesel site, towed the truck and actually ended up having the whole thing rebuilt front to back and uh, had a billet forward drum put in the truck as well. So, or in the transmission. So that fixed my issue because the slicks do beat the truck up and I actually haven't been to the racetrack for probably over a year. So uh, took care of that issue, but um, Bob Riley is the man, very, very knowledgeable with, uh, with these trucks and these transmissions. So he's very passionate about it. He has a custom clutch material made, which is uh, something that hits, that's his baby. And it is a hell of a clutch material. He took apart each gear clutch pack in front of me when I had it rebuilt. And this was after countless highway pulls and drag racing and slicks, you know, burnout with slicks, all that crazy stuff. And these clutches look like they were put in the truck like a week ago. They had very, very minimal wear, no heat stress. So very, very impressed with his product. And as far as the torque converter goes, I have a, I have their Hercules converter, which is good for about a thousand horsepower, but converter's awesome. It locks right up. You can really feel it. It's it's a, it's a pretty sweet setup, so I really, really like this transmission, and I highly recommend Diesel Sight. If you guys are interested in any other power stroke parts, I'll make sure I put their link in the description so you guys can go check out their website. They have a lot of cool stuff that they offer. Uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, the Adrenaline High Pressure Oil Pump is their product. Uh, my clutch fan, I have a lot of different parts on, the, on my truck from them, so customer service is outstanding. So make sure you guys check them out. They really have a lot of cool stuff. Just a couple of little updates slash off topic issues, or not issues, but things. So uh, truck's been doing awesome with the 472, really have gotten used to it now, worked out a lot of the kinks. Uh, I did get a, a, a blankie for the, for the uh, exhaust housing. There's a lot of mixed things with turbo blankets and I've always been a fan of them. I've had, I had one on my old turbo with the 369 when I first got it together, but it ended up coming apart. It was a cheaper, it was a cheaper blanket, but this blanket I got at a local race shop and it's by a company called Thermal Zero. They make uh, blankets for T3, T4, I think and even T6 mount uh, turbochargers. So uh, the theory behind that is to really keep the heat in the turbine housing. So it eliminates a lot of the heat from under the hood. And it also helps expand the, uh, the exducer and the exhaust side of the turbo. Helps the faster spool up, things like that. Unless I'm just being paranoid, but I feel like it does light the turbocharger up a little bit better. Some people say not. And that's fine that's it you know, everybody's entitled to their opinion so that thing's been pretty awesome and one thing's been driving me pretty crazy and i actually just got you know, if you guys have obs trucks you know how these go so these dash trim pieces where there are pieces where the, i can't talk today the dash trim pieces that go on the on the dash bezel here these are original to my truck so they're super old and the driver's or the driver's side the one on my right hand side has been broken for God, it's gotta be a couple of years now. So going over railroad tracks and bumps, the thing would rattle and shake. So really, really drove me crazy. Finally, uh, I actually reached out to CP Addict and because those guys are the hub for anything you need for OBS stuff. This is a part that they don't make anymore. Uh, if you're lucky enough to find them new old stock, that's even better. But I ended up finding a super clean pair on eBay and they're from an Eddie Bauer truck. And the guy I bought them from actually uh, gave them a nice little light coat of paint and they actually came out pretty sweet. So this is one that was broken, but obviously you can see it's not broken anymore. And the matching one for the other side. I only wanted to get one, but you could see that there is a little bit of a color difference. This has a, a small coat of paint on it and it actually matches the rest of the bezel pretty good. So there's not really a contrast. And this one I actually took off of a, a junkyard truck and painted that one myself. So it actually matches up pretty nice. We, uh, we have some stuff coming up. Uh, for my truck, just some basic things that uh, I've never, that I need to do. Uh, I need to do my cab bushings, and I think I've told you guys in the last video, the turbocharger is rubbing on the motor for the windshield wipers, and I also found out it is rubbing on the, on the dash, I mean, excuse me, on the firewall a little bit. So my cab bushings, if I lay into the truck, some of them are dry rotted and cracked and kind of sagging a little bit, so I think that's going to be the fix. A bunch of people commented on my last video, so thank you for doing that. And they say just change the cab bushings out, that helped me. So uh, the guys are running a 400 frame turbocharger. So I think I'm gonna do that. I did change out the front ones on the radiator uh, core support when I had the engine out. 
So I'm gonna change out the, the remaining, I think there's four left. If you guys have any tips on that, go ahead and drop them below just so I make sure I, uh, I've never done them before, but I'm gonna go to Frankie's, uh, his house. He's got a nice little two post lift. I'm sure you guys have seen uh, to help us kind of move the cab easily and not worry about stuff falling and breaking. So we're gonna try and do some of that stuff. And we're also in the works uh, with Frankie's truck. We're gonna try to get a few things for his ride uh, dialed in. That is all that I have for this one, guys. Thank you for tuning in as always. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment section below. I do my best to answer everybody's questions and I appreciate everybody's support uh, going forward with the channel. We do plan on having some new merch out probably next year. We're looking into stickers, uh, some, a few different sizes of stickers, maybe two, hats as well, and even some t-shirts. So we're gonna start working on some artwork and bouncing some ideas around and uh, see what we can come up with. But I'd be super excited to get some new merch out to you guys and maybe come up with a different, uh, more efficient platform to get things shipped out. But uh, I'll update you more on that as we get closer. I will be seeing you guys very soon. And thank you for watching as always. My name is Brandon. This is the 7-3 Garage, and we will see you next time.